You're watching Escape It All Hood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about pet rocks, kindness rocks, and the seemingly random signs we receive as we travel life's path. All right, greetings and salutations. This episode is brought to you by people like Cynthia Coates, Dorothy Beck, and Joe Trompeter. Their membership in the Wonder and Whimsy Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Thank you, guys. If you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn about the Wonder and Whimsy Society, or be the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Indeed. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Ready for a win? Yeah, it, it actually feels kind of like... Cut. Cut. Start <laughs> I'm over. I'm moving without you. Start over. <laughs> Uh, it feels warm here today, I, and that is a really nice feeling. It is. Humidity has entered our vocabulary, and our curls are coming out, and it's wonderful. You Mine are. Curls. Well, you're getting well, your cut tomorrow, yeah, so there yeah, are a few curls almost. What I was going to say is, are you ready for a midweek break? But oh, yeah. uh, Didn't happen. I was verklempt. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we asked at the top of the show in the, uh, the pre-show uh, what... What was a fad that you got swept up in? Ooh. And uh, I've got a couple ones uh, that came in. Paul says, um, for kind of eight, kind of for eight years, was paleo diet. Okay. We're vegetarian now. Interesting. Well, Those are very different. Diets, I like when, aren't they? yeah, I like yeah. when um, fads can be healthy for you. Like, well, good, yeah. like right. I was like, actually thinking of like rolling, tight rolling my jeans. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> different, different kind. Victoria says jelly bracelets. I had a full arms yes, work. So old. Right, Victoria? Awesome. Do you remember when you would take the two and you could like loop them so they were kind of like intertwined? So they kind of had like this full look to it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think I do actually. Do you actually? Yeah. I, I How about I the cinching t shirt with the little, and we ha actually had plastic things that you would loop in to cinch your t shirt? Yep. Tight roll, tight roll jeans. Yes. That was a big one. Zipper jeans. Uh, flannel shirts the, in the 90s. On the sides of the That's ankles, big. I should say. Uh, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What else we got coming in? Anything? Uh, well, Mike weighs in and says he was a veg <laughs> he's been a vegetarian since Mother's Day, hoping to make it to Father's Day. Wow. Um I'm not Good sure. Good for you. Yeah, for that's, you. I, I assume that's something he's working towards. I, yeah, yeah. I, I was waiting for a joke of <laughs> like, know. you know, we ran that's out awesome. of meat or something. I don't know. Uh, Andrew, slap bracelets. Oh, you remember slap, slap bracelets? bracelets. Classic. Actually, right? someone told me recently that they knew the person who invented those. And that's a very rich person. Yeah. Like as a friend? Yes. Like knew the person? Yes. Like they knew of the person, like it was acquaintance of their mom or something like that hmm. invented slap bracelets. Random. And they're like, this person is very, very wealthy because they invented slap bracelets. <laughs> right? You're like, oh. I'm wasting what, I'm wasting my that? life. You know? That's basically <laughs> what that is about. Uh, well, we're going to learn a little bit more about how fads can make you quite wealthy a okay. little bit later on in the show. <laughs> Yay. Uh, how about Beanie Babies? That's oh, a, that is a classic, right? Yes. Beanie Babies. When McDonald's had them at the, in the Happy Meals. Yeah. My, my boss at the time got Happy Meals like every other day because she was trying to get the whole Collect set. Them all. And she Collect was, them it all. Was, it was so addictive. Yeah. All right. Well, we we don't want to delay too long here because we got a couple special guests, yes, little surprise do. guests coming up here. So let's get to that. And now a word from our sponsors. All right. Hello, Hello Tracy. Hello, Kathy <laughs> Rose. How are you guys? Good. Good, good. Thank you for being with us. So we so we wanted to have you on. Kathy and Tracy are both alumni of the Escape at All Hood Summit. Yes. And, and we actually have a handful, literally a handful of golden tickets remaining. Oh, literally, yeah. Uh, but we wanted to have some former alumni on, mainly because we're just tired of talking about it ourselves <laughs> and coming up we with things you to say about we it. We miss you. Obviously, uh, we see you here in the chat often on a Wednesday night, but yeah. we want to see your pretty faces. Yeah. So yeah. you guys have both been to one, and you're coming to this 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 one in Sheboygan here in August. Um, Tracy, let's start with you. 
Uh, what what was it about the uh, summit that you liked best and the one that you went to? It was a couple years ago now, but what was your favorite part? Do I have to say one thing? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. <laughs> well, what's funny is I didn't know Kathy Rose was going to be on, and I was going to say Kathy Rose oh. meeting her. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. yeah. Because I didn't know anyone, and I'm like, do I want to go by myself? I didn't know anyone, but everyone was so welcoming, and we were one of the eight wild ones, our group. And I think the most fun I had – so many things, but I love the scavenger hunt with my group. We had an app on our phone and we were kind of going around taking crazy pictures. That was fun. Um, and I loved all the outdoor stuff. Like we played mm. with the parachute, the rock, paper, scissors, war, bubbles. Uh, what else did we do outside? Oh, gosh. I have my little notes here. Oh, juggling. We did oh. juggling. Uh, mm -hmm. That was fun. And I just loved... The things that we did with our group, we had show and tell, we made a banner. Um, and of course, um, Jason and Kim, your inspirational speeches, those are awesome. I'm, I'm a constant learner, so I'm like taking notes. I love being inspired and, and just getting new insight to things. So very cool. That, that, that's, that's a lot. That's a There's pretty good list. Fun. Yeah. You're giving me good ideas for this next one. I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, we should do that again. <laughs> Kathy Rose, how about you? What, what stood out to you um, from your first summit experience? You know, to start out, as Tracy did, I walked up. First of all, I didn't know at all what to expect. I didn't know anybody else. <coughs> I didn't know you guys. I thought, you know, this Escape Adulthood Society was right up my alley. My dad was always, you know, my fearless leader in this from since I was a kid. And I love laughter and, and fun. So coming up and, um, yeah, meeting everybody, just having their arms wide open, the snakes in the beginning. Um, yeah. There won't know. be snakes at the next one. Watching Kim, watching Kim, you know, wrapping snakes around her neck and stuff was really cool. Um, I, I was in awe of that. I didn't do it myself. I did touch them. But I think the whole thing, um, the real blessing in all of it was that any activity that we did, different gifts from different people came out. So there was no headbutting, like, you know, one of the guys outside was at our table, Jim, he was, a, he's a great leader and he led the outdoor games. Um, and some people participated, some people sat on the side and chatted with other people. Um, when we did the scavenger hunt, I didn't partake in that extremely well, but I sat and talked with Jenna and uh, um, oh, Fui, your other your other helper's name. Now I can't remember well, her name. Sue, Sarah, Sue, Sarah, Lynn, Sarah. Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and you know, I just I just sat in the grass and and visited with people, met people from all over the country. It was a real blessing for me because I enjoy people and uh, and watching the different leadership styles. And of course, your your artwork and your um, talks that you gave us, inspirational talks, um, amazing. Very well done. Loved it. Thank you. Well, it's great to hear all of that. And, uh, you know, some of the things people that are watching, you know, they mentioned snakes. That was a was there won't be snakes theme. this time. That was my dream for that one. I was that like, was all him. The He's theme like, I was, was wild and free. We wanted to have snakes mm -hmm. and lizards and stuff. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. So we there Not are certain things that are. Uh, constant and other things that are different and we we try to make it uh unique for everyone so we we for people we have had people that have come that have come to all of them i don't know was this our eighth this one, will be our eighth eighth one. one. Yeah. so there's a few people that will be coming to their eighth summit and so we always feel like we need to be on our toes to provide what makes it cool but also have some surprises Variety. along the yeah. way and stuff so uh, yeah, it's great to hear I mean, we're great uh, i wanted to Go ahead, Kathy Rose. Sorry. No, I was saying the snakes were great. It was totally unexpected, and that was 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 what was so beautiful about it, you know. And they were they were beautiful snakes. I admired them from afar. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I hope people who didn't care for them would do. I'm like, yeah. it's not for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. Tracy. So I want to ask you. You're coming to this one in August. It's going to be in Sheboygan. We've never had it here before why did you sign up and what are you most looking forward to this year? 
knowing that you've already been to one, what's what's the biggest uh, anticipation? I think just being being with everyone that's kind of like minded. It was very welcoming, and I think kind of like the just the magic of it. Like Kathy was saying that everything that we did, whether you choose to participate or not, it was it wasn't like 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 you failed or you don't have to be the best at it. You were just doing like I painted a a birdhouse. Oh, it was very sad. <laughs> I am not artistic at all, but it was fun just doing that. So mm -hmm. I think for me, I'm also looking for a roomie. Maybe I'll hit Kathy up um, because I didn't know anyone last time. Yeah. Okay. Last time I stayed with a the friend in Madison, but I was like, oh, I want to stay with someone there. So there'll be someone that wants to stay with me. I'll bring earplugs because apparently <laughs> I score, but you know, we'll see a good time. <laughs> Very cool. Yes. How about you, Kathy Rose? What are you looking forward to the most? You know, it's 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 interesting here because COVID uh, saying um, COVID really took a number on me, and I, you know, I'm just one person on this big ball that we live on, and looking for blessings that occurred in COVID. Like I don't live in Manhattan, um, you know, I can get food, I can still talk to neighbors. I had so many blessings, but I must admit, it's been it's been quite a challenge for me. I literally thought my life was over when COVID started. Um, so when the, when the summit first came up, I thought I'm honestly a little too depressed to go, <laughs> which is crazy to say, but, and, th and that's when I told myself, well, that is exactly why I need to sign up and I need to get my butt in the car and I need to drive up there and give myself a breath of fresh air and be around like-minded people. As Tracy said. That's extremely important for me right now with my mental health. Um, I'm real. I'm doing fine. I just I need a lift, and as the summit is a, definitely a lift, and I'm so looking forward to it. Well, I'm so proud and glad that you did decide to give yourself that <laughs> um, that gift because I think that's a that the self care factor is a thing that that we all need right now mm -hmm. and. Whether it's the summit or something else, like it doesn't have to be that obviously, but like I just think it's uh, it's really important, and I, I think that's kind of what we're we're gearing up for is to acknowledge the year we've been through, but not dwell in it. And I think our focus for the summit is really to acknowledge what we've what's happened, but to really give ourselves a chance to like go forward in a positive way. And um, I'm so looking forward to it. I know uh, Jenna uh, who works with us was, was talking to someone who is in the wonder and whimsy society. And so has met a lot of people virtually um, and she's coming from California. And she said, she's so excited to meet these people that she met first online. She said, it's like uh, imaginary friends coming to life. <laughs> Is that like great? Oh, um, yeah. So whether you are in the Wonder and Women's Society or you watch these replays or you join us here live every week, I know there's a there's a, a steady crew of you. Um, I I think that's what I'm most excited about because there's also like people we've never met like in right. person that I, we feel mm -hmm. like we're really good friends with and I know super looking forward to uh, to hanging out. So I know that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know what I love about you, each of your stories, and correct me if I misunderstood this, but you each came to the first summit not knowing anyone. Mm -hmm. That is yep. amazing, True. courageous. And, and you know, <laughs> we have people that reach out to us and say, like, I, do people come alone? I just answered that question just the other day by email. And I'm like, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And to see, think of you guys, I don't ever think of you guys coming alone. In, t in the sense of you all, you know, everybody, you, you fit know? right in. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like you came alone. I had no idea, you know? So that idea that if that is, if, if someone's watching this and they're, they are, are considering, you know, make taking that step, like to see uh, the possibilities of what could be in front of them is kind of exciting. So your examples are amazing. That's, yeah. that's so cool. And Contrary to popular belief, Kim and I are both introverts. So <laughs> we we're really big on making sure that it's a comfortable experience. Yes. We don't just mm -hmm. throw you into stuff. And like you guys alluded to, like you're free to participate in as much or as little as you want. And right. mm -hmm. um, people 
I think people really appreciate that. So that's we try to make that that welcoming. There's so, so many good comments. Are you guys able to see the comments right now? Or no. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Check out. There's, uh, uh, Paul I'm Tracy back. said, Kathy, you have to come sit with us at our table. Oh. So there's, people are uh, excited. A couple people also looking for roommates. So Jen um, says, thankful for the genuineness of this group and the support they each bring. Thanks, Tracy and Kathy Rose. Aww. Oh. Yeah. And this time is going to be so amazing because now I do know people like Paul and Kara, you know, just from Facebook and, yeah. you know, admiring photos and, and Tracy, you know, I mean, I, I feel like we're, we're, that we're bosom buddies, you know, and we sat together at the gala night and, you know, just, it's, I don't know, it's, it's been an amazing journey and I'm looking forward to, a, you know, that continuing on for the rest of my life. Cool. Oh. Well, that's very, uh, that's why we do it. And yeah. it's great to hear that. So um, thank you both I know. for so taking the time you. to be I on with us. I just want to pull you into our, our uh, basement okay. here. Like, come on, stay with us. Come on. <laughs> 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 so this is great. We really, we invited you guys to join us last minute. So we appreciate your spontaneity and your willingness to just say, yes, okay, I'll be there. So any, any last words that you wanted to, to share? No, no pressure or anything, but I just want to give you the chance. How about it's magical. You have to go. It was so much fun. It was, yeah. Go, come, come, Aww. come, come. <laughs> and like Jason said, we, we deserve it after this year that we've had, we need some, we need to self give ourselves a little bit of self love and, yeah. and kindness, show kindness to ourselves so that I think we're better for people if we take care, better care of ourselves. So, and that's, that's my goal is to be a, a good people person and, I gotta be. I gotta take care of myself if I want to be able to do that. So, yes. yeah, please. Aww, awesome. Well, great. thank you both so much for being with us. You guys have a great night, and uh, we will see you soon. It's Yay! not going to be long. Take care Thanks, of you guys. too. Thank you. All right. I, I think the thing that I was thinking about yes. um, is that that because of what just happened, COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Because COVID, um, this is not like let's go get a massage kind of healing, right? I, and I it's think deeper. It's yeah, deeper. it's much deeper. Mm -hmm. No matter what your year was, it was you were impacted, and there's there's an emotional component to this that we're really excited about addressing in a really positive and unique way. Yep, for sure. Um, let's see. Kristen says, my first summit, I also didn't know anyone. I was reaching way out of my comfort zone. That anxiousness lasted less than a minute. Yay. So that is great to hear. Aww. And uh, so Martha cool, chimes in. She's coming. She's the first time. She says, y'all have been here before. Now need to welcome us rookies. Oh. And uh, yeah, there is there is a lot of first timers. It's hard to believe you are, Martha, because of Wonder and Whimsy. So there's a lot of that where I'm going to, it's going to be very confusing in my head. I'm not even going to try to figure out who's been there, who hasn't. It's yep. it's just going to be awesome no matter who's there. Well, so. and that's the other thing is when you talk about the healing and being next to great the Great Lake of Michigan yeah. is... Uh, it works. It's like, it's yeah. a powerful balm for the soul. And um, really, we're, we're down to the last few tickets. I, I, I suspect... Just look at your shirt. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to read. I don't know if that's showing up, but the shirt says Lake Michigan unsalted. So uh, the, yeah. fresh, the fresh lake. So yeah. it's going down August 2nd and 3rd. You can learn more about it at escapeadulthoodsummit.com. You can come alone. You can bring a partner in crime. Uh, you may even be able to convince your boss to pay yeah. for it. Uh, it's a very good professional development thing. Mm -hmm. uh, hope you can join us uh, this year. If not, next year. And um, I think it's time to, to, to move on to our next uh, thing. I'm excited right. about this. Uh, the Wayback Machine again. The Wayback Machine. And I've got <laughs> We're still uh, the same age. Thank goodness. Some fun Woo. things to talk about. So All right. this is Gary Dahl. I bet you don't know what Gary Dahl is known for, although there is a clue in that picture. Oh, ten... no. Pet oh, oh, I see it. There you go. <laughs> ah, okay. Today we're talking about the pet rock. I I've heard of the pet rock. I know the pet rock. Mm -hmm. I had no idea the history of the pet rock. Okay. And now I'm going to tell you the history of the pet rock. Very Sweet. interesting. So it's a collectible toy that was made in 1975. So I wasn't even around yet. You weren't around yet. No. Close. You were close. very close. close. Yeah. Very close. Uh, it was by an advertising executive, Gary Dahl. So in April, he's in a bar with his friends. 
and he's listening them to listening them complain about their pets, like all the things. You got to be walked. You got to bathe them. They rip up the the, mm-hmm. the furniture. Got to groom them. All this sort of stuff. And he said that uh, he had the idea for the perfect pet, a rock. Okay. He says you don't have to do any of those things. It doesn't die. It doesn't get sick. It's not disobedient. It doesn't need to be fed. So, of course, it's a joke. Right. But he decided that there was more to it than that. So he went home and he begins writing an owner's manual for this hypothetical pet rock, which mm-hmm. detailed how to best handle it, the tricks it could perform. Um, playing dead was the most popular um, and how it could remain a faithful companion due to its long lifespan. <laughs> so he basically marketed this like a live pet in custom cardboard boxes, complete with straw and breathing holes, um, which I got a, I got a little shot here, so you can see that. So this is what the little box looks like. Oh my gosh. The rocks were purchased from a local sand and gravel company for practically nothing. Uh, came from Mexico, the Mexico's Rosarita Beach. And what's interesting about this, and I think this is why this fits, like why we're talking about it right now, is because it was a beneficiary of good timing. So Vietnam had just ended, mm. uh, but Watergate was still was still fresh. So the country's mood was slightly downcast. It's familiar. Anyone, anyone, <laughs> anyone relate to that at all? I, I don't know. Um, Dahl believed that people would see the inane nature of the pet rock and recognize the humor of it. So he debuted the rock at a gift show in San Francisco and waited for a reaction. Oh, gosh. Was he, he nervous? He got one. <laughs> People understood the appeal right away, began taking orders. Neiman Marcus wanted 1,000 rocks. Oh Bloomingdale signed on. Newsweek did a story with a picture and spread the word. Um, wow. When the holiday season arrived, Dahl was selling up to 100,000 pet rocks a day. Oh, what? 100,000. <laughs> so the fad lasted about six months, which is crazy to think about how ingrained it is. I mean, it's a, it's a pop culture kids? thing. Six, six months? months was the, was wow. the bulk. Um, ending after a short increase in sales, he sold over 1 million pet rocks for $4 each, becoming a millionaire. Wow. <laughs> Six months. Um, and they still sell them online. You can still find them online. He's not, it's not his business. He actually passed away in 2015. Hmm. So the I've pet, never seen the box. The I've never, rock. I've never seen it like merchandised, you know, that's it's, or uh, packaged, I should say. It's pretty interesting. Brenda, I know the box is cute. It really does add to the, the whole feel of it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, it, it's like a happy meal mixed with like a pet crate, right? Where right. there's like the breathing yeah. holes in there. Um, Martha catches and t- tames them from the wild, which not just anybody can do. That's, uh, I mean, that's you really, skill. That's, uh, you know, that's a lot of bravery. That's, you know. <laughs> Brenda admits that she, or she says she can tell the we- can tell the weather too. Yeah, that's one of its other skills. Really? Is that part of it? Uh, kind of like how your dog, you know, gets all oh, yeah. antsy when a storm's coming. Yeah, a, a so rock can, can, rock can, can tell do that. that. Um, I tell you what, guys, we're overthinking this. We're overthinking any sort of innovation here. <laughs> Paul had one. Paul Paul admits that he had one. The question is, did you it. name it? Did you name it? And did people paint on them? Or was that like a later I don't know. Like I saw a thing like, that showed googly eyes okay. and said those weren't included. Okay. Uh, Victoria says, a friend in high school made me a fancy pet rock as a birthday gift. I had a fancy party hat and was holding a happy birthday Victoria Aww. son. I still have it somewhere. That's so cool. Love that. I know it's it's really not as hard as you think as far as like it it is one of those things you can just kind of leverage and be like this is cool yeah right and it, well <laughs> Apparently. And I think it's that's the thing is uh, uh, Helen says I was surrounded by a pack of them once on Link Superior yeah you have to be careful you have to be careful I know they they, they oh, like to pack. congregate in bunches right 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 um, one one thing I saw is it said that they're really good in a fight. Mm. That you have, but they have to. They have to use the owner needs to help with it. Throwing <laughs> <laughs> rocks at people—is so, that yeah, what we're talking exactly, about? Exactly. Yes. Oh. Uh, it was. It was Rocky. That was Paul's. <laughs> Paul's pet dun, rock. Dun, 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 <laughs> Which is also perfectly timed, right? Because I believe Rocky won Best Picture in 1976 Random. or 75. Right when I. Oh. Right about when I was. 
born as well. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Fun facts yeah. in the Wayback Machine about the pet rock. And uh, now it's time to talk about a different kind of rock. I think. Right. Anything else you want to say about any of that? No, but it does. There, this added a lot of uh, depth to my rock knowledge. So I appreciate <laughs> which was, that. <laughs> which was dense. It's pretty, yeah. It was dense. <laughs> Hollow. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Oops. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Technical well, difficulties. We're having we'll a be, little, yeah. we'll be right. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Alrighty then. In the immortal words of a trick-or-treating Charlie Brown, I got a rock. It wasn't just any rock, mind you. It was a kindness rock. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, people hand paint ordinary rocks with inspirational or encouraging messages and leave them in a public place for someone to find. Well, this particular one was a little bit shaped like a heart painted red and includes the words, love you. I found it on a walk near the lakeside bench where I like to sit. I immediately recognized what it was, but completely resisted the idea that it could actually be intended for me. After all, the placement seemed strange, hardly a location I'd consider a proper hiding spot. They probably accidentally dropped it and it would come back looking for it. Somebody else probably needs it more than I do. I don't need to hear this message. Do I? Finally, I realized these are made to be left behind for someone to find, and whoever finds it is who it's for. I believe that. Usually, I'm the person doing things like this. Whether it's an art drop where I hide a piece of art in a public location, or when I hide Marty the Penguin under someone's chair at a speaking engagement, I love doing anonymous things. And I trust completely that whoever ends up being the recipient is exactly the person it was meant for. Yet apparently, I don't believe that it works the same way when it pertains to me. Well, eventually I did take the rock, examined it, and accepted it as a gift. I sat on the bench and thought about how tired I was from getting our home and business settled since our move in January. Overwhelmed with impro home improvement projects and business obligations, I was also processing a curveball I'd received that morning concerning the renovation of my studio. I was discouraged and I was exhausted. As I watched the waves rhythmically roll in and felt them wash away the wall of anxieties that had built up, I smiled. Maybe this rock really was meant for me. Maybe God, through the actions of another person, really wanted me to know he loved me right at that exact moment. Is it all a bit much to attach any spiritual meaning to the timing of a random rock being placed in my path by a random stranger on a random day? Perhaps. I don't have any proof to offer, that's for sure. It's nice to fancy such thoughts of God using his creation to send us random love notes. But it's harder when you take into account the dark times in your life when he didn't feel present at all. Those times it appeared that he just sat back and allowed terrible things to happen. What then? Was he too busy to notice? Too incompetent to help? Those are hard questions. I believe God loves us and wants us to love one another. And I also know that love isn't love if you're forced into it. So the gift of free will takes an awful lot of control out of his hands. By giving us the power to love, we've also been given the power to hurt one another deeply. Thankfully, God can turn pain into plot twists. Sometimes his response to the bad guy blowing up our bridge is to send a speedboat to catch us and whisk us off to someplace better. Is it possible that instead of being too busy or too weak, God is attentive and powerful enough to transform our disaster into something triumphant? Maybe this great artist is creative enough to weave seemingly random events, both the heartbreaking and the banal, 
into a tapestry that is more detailed and delightful than we could ever imagine. I, for one, have had experiences in which very good things came from very bad circumstances, but this is important. Until the exact moment the blessing came into focus, sometimes years later, the situation seemed hopeless and impossible. I was convinced of it. I surveyed the scene of the crime, examined the facts at hand, and it was clear, open, shut case. Except that sometimes we don't have all the facts. Sometimes we interpret them incorrectly. And sometimes a new piece of evidence emerges that recasts all of the previous facts in a new light, resulting in a completely different story. Like the end of a good mystery, it's gratifying when the pieces of understanding fall into place. The hard part is living in the tension before the puzzle is resolved, wrestling with the whys and the how could yous. I prefer having the script. I want to see how it ends. I'd like approval rights, thank you very much. Maybe it takes a few hundred pages for this plot twist to resolve, but as long as it does, I'm fine with it. I'll even settle for an idea of how it might resolve. Just give me a possibility, no matter how narrow, and I can rest secure in my faith. But too often I don't see any positive outcome or a satisfactory explanation for why terrible things happen to good people. Alas, this is a limitation of being human and living on the foggy side of eternity. Like a toddler lacking in understanding and impatient for answers, we cry out in frustration, exhaustion, and anger. Life is beautiful, but it's not easy. Sometimes it just wears us out physically and emotionally. But I believe God knows this and he empathizes with us. And that's why I suspect sometimes he uses random rocks made by random strangers to remind you that he sees you, he's with you, and he loves you very much. Who knows? Maybe he inspired me to share this little message to serve as a similar reminder to be delivered, be delivered today just for you. That's good. Do you uh, always match your, your uh, received rocks to your shoes? I do. I do. <laughs> Everyone try, else is thinking it too, weren't you? <laughs> I try to uh, to always do that. Yeah, whenever I get a gift, I make sure that I'm wearing clothes that match the gift of specifically of some. tennis shoes that match that gift. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty awesome. And you know, it's kind of neat as you were saying this. I know there's people in the comments that are big into making these rocks and leaving them, and everybody has their own little version of how they like to do this. I, this rock is so simple, but it's so beautiful. It literally just says "love you." Yeah. Um, I yeah. tend to want to make my rock like super detailed, <laughs> like some uh, pointillism or something. And it's like, wow, like for this simple little message to mean so much. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the other the thing that I I, I journaled about this after it happened, and I just couldn't get over the fact that it was like, I, I just resisted that it could possibly be for me because I knew what it was. Right. And I've, oh, I'm, I'm above the kindness rock thing. Someone else needs, it's like, what a, I don't know if that's prideful or terribly like unworthy. It's like kind of a combination of both, but I think we all, I think we can relate to that, right? Well, Where I you think kind it, of feel like you don't deserve it. It kind of goes with it. the caregiver side of what we do, right? And you don't think of maybe our work as being caregivers, but we, we do consider ourselves encouragers in the mm -hmm. world, um, not just in our, our home. Um, but I think the caregivers, we tend to not receive very well. <laughs> we tend to give and give and give, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think there's, you guys can all relate to that in different ways, whoever it is you're caring for. Sometimes it's hard to receive. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's time to get out those Ooh. drawing toys and utensils <laughs> and, and crayons rocks. and markers and stuff. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into a, a segment of let's draw. Okie doke. Let's get into this now. This is gonna be. Uh, I'm, we're we're going we're going for this. This is going to be a fun one. I like uh, I like it's I came up with this one background. right away. Yeah, it's kind of one of my fun. I look at all the past ones and I try to come up with a different <laughs> okay color. Really, that we oh, haven't done in do a that. while, right? So yeah. we're going to start out with here. Is uh, we're just going to draw a couple shapes. Um, they don't have to be perfect, but 
I'm going to do kind of like a little bit of an oblong shape this way and kind of an ob oblong, easy for me to say, oblong. ovally shape right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we've got that. Good to go. Now I'm going to draw a little curved line here and a little curved line We're doing here. Easter, it kind of feels like Easter eggs tonight. It's going to look like Easter eggs. I know, eggs, like, like Easter little... eggs, like if you were drinking. Okay. <laughs> You're a little wobbly. <laughs> then I'm going to draw a little curved line here. Okay. All right. Now we're going to draw a curved loopy... What would you call that? You know what, Loop, what are you going to call that? It's like the Gerber baby. Yeah, it's like a little curl. It's a Gerber right? baby a curl. Gerber baby curl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to draw a couple little little spots. Steven is guessing pet rocks. That's interesting. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to, uh, around this one, I'm going to draw a circle around this little dot. Hmm. All right. This is going to be a weird Easter egg. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to draw a couple uh, ovals over here. Okay. okay. And, and Jenna, uh, Jenna's reminding those to invite others, yes, friends who yes. might want to draw with Please us. Please hit that button, let them, let other people mm -hmm. know what's going on, because this is a kind of a fun part. Yeah. Okay, a couple of triangles up here. Oh. Starting to come into come into play here. And then I'm going to draw another triangle that looks like this. Steven's doing a callback, a monocle. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah, yeah, he's wondering if that's a monocle. I okay, love that. And I'm going to draw like a little line down there and then an upside down V. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see, we got a cat thing going on. So I'm just going to draw a line right through the middle of the eye, give it that kind of cat eye look. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to loop this around. This is a little tail. No more curl. I mean, it still kind of could be. And uh, and this guy, this is going to be a little cute little dog. So I'm going to do a little oval. And I'm going to leave a little um, <laughs> spot there because then it makes it look like he's got a little wet nose, which is good for dogs. Jennifer Tackett says, is it pets that are rocks? Is it pets that are rocks? <laughs> All right, now we've got our uh, little, little smile here. And then I'm going to put a little tongue in here. Just like that. Cute, cute. And that's, that's, oh, then we got to draw some uh, whiskers here. So it's basically um, some straight lines there for the cat. And then for this little dog, I'm just going to put these little, three little dots. All right. They're cute. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to draw some lines in here because contrary to Previous episodes, these we're looking down on these rocks. They're not levitating. So they are rocks. Yes, they are. If you they are pets haven't that are rocks. figured that out, they're <laughs> pet rocks, right? Um, so just give a sense of the background here, the table it's on or whatever. Helps ground it. And then we're gonna throw some color in here, which is which is the fun part. We're gonna do um gonna do brown brown ears and of course this is the fun part i i would like to see if anyone else adds any more additional rocks and does different versions that would be cool yeah, of course you get true. kind of fun to do your own colors so i'm going to make this uh, garfield orange <laughs> i think this cat does kind of look like he'd hate Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't look like the happiest cat. Uh, when have you ever seen a happy cat? <laughs> no, this is, this is realistic. Yeah. It's true. All right, now I'm going to draw mm -hmm. some little stripes. Make it look a little bit like a tiger. I think Jennifer Tackett accepted your challenge about what Adding else could in you more. make. She's like, my gears oh, are yeah, turning. Yeah. You could, have, uh, you could right? make a little turtle. You could make pet a art, art. She loves pet panda. art. Mm -hmm. Oh, panda. Right. Be so cute. Okay, I'm going to give this guy a little skunk. Color in his ears here. And uh, let's see. Pets, pets, cats kind of have yellowish eyes, don't they? Mm, good enough. 
Sign uh, me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I'm know. not a cat Observant. expert. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. All right, then we're going to do... Oh, a turtle would be cute, Brenda. Yes. You could do a little bird. Adorable. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got this little... Of course, there's all kinds of breeds of dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't know technically what this... This is like a mashup of a beagle and... Um, the target dog. What, is that? what kind of dog is that? That little spot. Oh yeah. Uh... And then we'll put a little. The target dog. <laughs> I don't see him very much anymore. No. No. All right. So that's pretty good. And if you want to add just a you know a little final touch to add some dimension to it, is if I get a little bit of darker version of my color and kind of, kind of draw on the side this darker and then it will be kind of a shadow and so the same thing i'll get a little bit lighter white which of course is gray right mm -hmm. and um leah says it's a mutt it's a mutt yeah uh, i'm good Everybody with that loves mutts cool right mm -hmm. oh Blen blenheim cavalier like buddy boy oh it does kind of look like buddy i oh. don't know what you just said <laughs> <laughs> blenheim i that's that's not familiar to me but her buddy boy is so cute. Oh my gosh. English bulldog, question mark. All right, there we go. And then, you know what I'm going to add too, is I'm going to add a little um, highlight, because oops, maybe it's like a, a smooth rock. I'm going to put a little mm -hmm. highlight right there. Tracy Miller says someone should make a Marty pet rock. Ooh, and Jen, that, Jen says that. on it, Jennifer. Yeah. She <laughs> nice. and uh, she and Jennifer and Stephen often incorporate Marty mm -hmm. into their their art. So yes. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. All right, so there oh, we go. Oh, that turned out There's really some cool. Some fun little pet pet rocks, pet pet rocks, right? Yes. Um, I can't wait to see yours. Be sure to email them to us at kj at escapeadulthood.com. We have so much fun seeing these. Oftentimes I'm looking at them and we get to show the kids and it's just neat to be able to see people's takes on this artwork. So yeah, so we did our uh, we did our pizza party last week. We had an interview with Kyle Sheely, who is the author of A Pizza with Everything on it. It was a blast. So oh, if you didn't check man. that out in the archives, be sure to check that interview out. Um, but we did a we did a pizza party. That's what we drew last week. And Jill offered her contribution. We got a lot of contributions this week. I know, this, this is so cute, Jill. Couldn't uh, fit them all party. in, but uh, we got Helen. Uh, she brought <gasps> in from the faces, digital Helen. art. Yes. Loved it. Super Loved that little fun. hat on the oh guy on the right. And then uh, who else we got? Oh, Kara that did <laughs> vegetarian. And I love her little dudes. I love that guy with the olives. It was such I a know. creative idea a to do uh, olive eyes. And, uh, and it was her birthday over the weekend. So little she, tomato she's kind of got the birthday party pizza party yep. going. So yep. happy birthday, Kara. Tied it all in. So oh the green gosh. peppers so and the cute. little, love the little, I think those little tomatoes on the guy on the right. Just awesome. Awesome work. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. For contributing that, thank you to everyone who sent in photos. Uh, send them in to us at kj at escapeatallhood.com. We love to see your work, um, and everyone else does too. It's kind of fun to see that. It is fun to share. Okay, well, here's our meme of the week. It is a rare photo of a natural rock formation. <laughs> How many of these rocks can you name, Kim? Can you name them all? Of course, the rock. The rock. Right. Kid rock. And is that, um, I can't tell who that is in the background. Is that Chris Rock? Chris Rock. Ah, yeah. it's kind of hard to tell. That but is yes. okay. quite a I rock. Got all of them? That is quite, I'm shocked. I know. I'm shocked. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, rocks. natural, natural rock formation. That, <laughs> that made me chuckle when I saw that. Uh, okay, so we have been doing a little bit of a project the last few weeks. It's called the Because COVID Project. And uh, started out, do I have it? Yeah, started out, I made this little sign. And uh, I wrote, because COVID, I got to paint more. It was one of the amazing things uh, that came out of a very terrible time, right? It's not a great year for any of us. But a lot of good things did come from it. I was thinking I might write because COVID Sheboygan shenanigans. Sheboygan shenanigans. Because that would, that we weren't work. even in Sheboygan last year, right? Yeah. So yeah. I uh, I encourage you uh, to print out your own sign 
and write down your COVID blessing. Again, uh, lots of terrible things have happened, but the, I think what will help us heal is to realize what good things uh, came out of this storm that we went through. Sweet. And uh, you're just waiting, <laughs> waiting to push that. Uh, and so what's been cool is we've been getting some in. Yeah. All right. And I wanted to share some of them. I'm starting to get a bunch of cool ones. Uh, Patty, uh, I can't read all of these, but she sent she this one. This, so basically she did a return to teaching um, kids after an 11 year absence and a Which, brick wall at her old job. Like how many people walk into that burning building? <laughs> right, right. She is like a true hero to be like, Oh yeah, I'll be a teacher this year. What? Yeah. Well, her job Patty. and the stuff she was going through with COVID, she said was just becoming really difficult. And so she stepped away from it and it gave her an opportunity to have this new chance to get back to something she realized she had forgotten how much she loved. And uh, that was that was the impetus. So that wow. was super cool. Uh, Amy said, I get to attend my cousin's church over 300 miles away. That's uh, really How cool amazing. is that? And yeah. one little detail I noticed, which may be hard to pick up, that little uh, art it? in the upper corner there oh my is gosh. an That's old, old, old school print of mine. Is that the hot air balloon? The hot air balloon. Whoa. It says it's time to dream bigger. So Amy has clearly been around for a while in wow. this, this tribe. That's cool, um, Amy. Michelle. Michelle Aww. became a Grammy two more Aww. times. Two more. So there's two, or two little grandbabies. Looks like a boy and a girl. If Great. I know anything by colored hearts being pink and blue, oh, yeah. I know what that means, right? <laughs> One of each. Oh, yeah, Pretty man. sweet. Wow. Uh, Tessa, uh, going along with that theme, I got to become a stay-at-home mom to our little miracle baby. Actually, Aww. that was... Uh, she, nope, this, that was the next one. This one, she became oh. a first-time mom. Okay. First-time mom. Aww. First time mom, so that was pretty sweet. Awesome. And then this one, uh, stay at home it's mom for little them. miracle Aww. baby. So is that cool. adorable? Like oh the smiles on both I of know. them is I know. like warms my heart. And then uh, Bill uh, Falsgraf says I get to Wonder walk. Wonder Whimsy Society members. Yep, I, I got to walk my kids to school every day mm. or get to. That's cool. And then you guys brace yourself for the adorableness that is about to ensue. <laughs> Bill sent a picture of his daughters who each made their own signs. Yeah. Aww. Handmade signs, no less. Which is amazing. First Bill. one amazing. writes, we still get to go to school in her cute little writing. And then her sister said, I didn't have to go to school on Fridays. <laughs> so I like that. It was like, it's good and more good yeah. right there. Right. Uh, so Aww. those were a few of the ones. Uh, maybe I'll, send, I'll share some more next week. But... If you haven't had a chance to do that, I really, I hope you will. Um, I hope that you will uh, print it out. Go to escapeitallhood.com slash because COVID and you'll be able to print out print out a sheet just like this. Let's say too, like hashtag not a rule. If you your printer's not working, just write it out. You can just write, write it out. Write it out yeah. on a, with a Sharpie. You know, it doesn't have to be this colorful yeah. thing. So. The instructions are all there. Uh, escapeitallhood.com slash because COVID. Um, we'd love for you to put it on social media, tag it, send it to us. Um, it's, it's, we're hoping to like get a bunch of these and then just keep sharing them, um, as a living, uh, testament to some of the good that has come out of COVID. So, yeah. um, play along, send yours in. I know, uh, I think I saw someone said, uh, yeah, Brenda said, thanks for the reminder. I forgot to write mine. Yes. So yes, do it, do it. write yours, send it to us. We'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving on to giveaway. It's giveaway time already? Already? We already there? All right. Very easy way to enter today's giveaway. All you have to do is answer this question. What rock is the best rock? Ooh. What rock is the best rock? I heard rock? you and Ben talking about this. You were analyzing this question a little this bit. Is a, this, is a, this is deep. Is or it? very shallow. <laughs> it sinks to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. uh, what can they win, Kim? What can oh, they win? you know, this is fun. In fact, it's kind of fun to see people winning and then like a week later, they're buying a t-shirt or something on the lemonade stand. We have a $10 gift card to our lemonade stand, which is our online store for all things 
escape adulthood. Um, so yeah, it's a very soft, comfortable opportunity <laughs> for you to, uh, you know, get something new. So this is a tough one, Jay. I, I'll admit, this is this is one of those This questions. is not one you start out with, but when you get to show 52, <laughs> some of you veterans here I know are are ready to step up. So All right. Helen comes in with the, the rock. rock. Oh, yeah. Dwayne. I smell what you're cooking. We Helen. watched the tooth fairy, right? What bothers me is when I was in college, we talked last week about being in college watching wrestling, yeah. ordering $5 yeah. pizzas. Eating a lot of pizza. That was the hate. That was when, like, I literally saw the transformation of Dwayne Johnson. He was Rocky Maivia. Okay, nerd alert. What? Nerd alert. He was Rocky Maivia. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Hated him. Worst wrestler ever. Didn't he have, like, that high He had this the, floppy the, oh, afro I thought it was thing. Like, I actually like saw him Smith. live in Chicago what? at WrestleMania. 13. Oh my goodness. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Then he changed his persona and he became like his his rock persona was more him. Yeah. It was more him. Yeah. And mm-hmm. suddenly he transformed into my favorite wrestler. Probably top three of all time. Hmm. All right. Here's what bothers me. I was around for that. My kids, we watched Tooth Fairy. They they have no idea that he was a wrestler. Well, like, I blame you. The Rock. That's, that's, that's you mean fault. Dwayne Johnson? I'm like, who the hell is Dwayne Johnson? It's The Rock. Okay, The Rock. That's all. That's Dwayne it. Johnson. Yeah, Dwayne Johnson. Give me a break. You just haven't shown him shown him enough YouTubes of The Rock. Well, we. I mean, I, I'm falling down on the job. Yeah, I got to anyway. Anyway, any WWE I fans out there? Digress. Yeah. Little. <laughs> Little Rocky Maya via talk. Uh, Jennifer, rockin' uh, and roll. And Kathy yes, also said rock, rock and, and roll. roll. Good. Yeah. Here we go. Rachel coming in. Pop rocks. Ooh, that's Pop a rocks. New one. Like that. Amy, yes. hard rock. Hard Ooh. rock. I don't know if she means the cafe or just like, oh, like Metallica. Metallica, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Either one's the good. The Rock of Gibraltar. I like that one. Nice. Uh, my Rock. I'm glad your rock is the best rock. That's awesome. Uh, how right. about Lava Rock? Lava rock. Lava Ooh, rock. interesting, Christine. I like this. The one you find walking along uh, the beach. Right? Very good. Very like good. that, Jill. Mm-hmm. Um, the rock is pretty cool, but Christian rock is yeah. pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a good Christian one, too. Rock. rock candy. Ooh, that's like that like stick with all the stuff on yeah. it. Yeah. I've never had that. How about diamonds? Yeah. Have you ever had Ooh, one of those? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You better say yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kristen going with the soft rock. James oh, Taylor's soft oh, rock. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah, good one. We've got recovery rocks. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I was waiting for this one. Moon rock. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite rocks. Moon rock. That's awesome. Nice uh, one, Christy Ign- Igneous rocks. Igneous. Here we go with science. Oh, science. Man. Oh, Fraggle rock. Ooh, down with Fraggle rock. Down with Fraggle rock. I guess I did. I want nice. Down with Fraggle rock button. Rock. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Let me whip that right up. Good one, Mike. Uh, Rock of Ages. Nice. Uh, Steven with more signs. Tungsten, chemical symbol W, which stands for Wolfram and is really fun to say. Wolfram. Wolfram. There you go. This is just a little secret for some people who might know what I'm doing. Mm. Martha. (laughs) Martha. (laughs) Martha smells what you're cooking. Uh, (laughs) Punk rock. How about Star Rock, oh, Illinois State Park? Star Rock. Very good, Star Rock. Do people Rock-o. outside of Illinois know Star Rock? That's where we had our engagement photos. It is. We did the yes. whole. Remember those? Ooh, we, oh, hey, that's kind of appropriate because tomorrow's our anniversary. Our it engagement. is. 21 years. <laughs> We made a whole big deal out of it last year, number 20. Now we have to wait. I know, you have to make a big deal. The I guess zeros. 25. Five we can zeros. care about it yeah. again. Ones and twos don't matter. Uh, no. we, this one I threw up. Uh, Kissing Camels, Garden of the Garage. Oh, Gods. Love yes, that one. Bad. You've seen that one. It's I love that, that park you drive through. It's so pretty. Um, I want to go back there. Mm-hmm. We'll meet you there, Mary Beth. Yeah. Okay. You bring your corgis. Uh, how about Stonehenge? Ooh. Oh, so I should have had the I Stonehenge art tonight. Come on. <laughs> It's like you don't even know your own portfolio. This is embarrassing. Holy nightmare. <laughs> it's terrible. Jenna would have got that. Jenna knows my art better than I do. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Jenna pulls out Martha. obscure Kim and Jason comic strips that are perfect for the day. Rocky Road. I was waiting for that. Rocky Road ice cream. 
Uh, wow. See, you know what look I was at thinking this. Of? What's that um, concert venue? Did someone say this in the comments? Maybe Rachel? Red Rocks. Red Rocks. Mm, I, I that's I on my that. bucket list to go to that. Uh, how concert. about Third Rock from the Sun? Ooh, it's a pretty decent rock right nice. there. Nice. Yeah. Good. See, they so you guys, good. You guys rocked it. I didn't even mean to say that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that I I I literally didn't mean for that. No, to be you a didn't. Part. No. You're doing dad jokes. Oh, they just, man. You're they just dad. flow. They yeah, just flow. they just flow. When you become a dad, they just 21 flow. 21 years, you guys. 21. Mm, good stuff. 21. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Actually, he it's is taking exciting. me um, on a date tomorrow night, and it's a mystery. I don't know where we're going, but I have to dress up. So it'll be fun. Maybe we'll take a nice picture of ourselves or something. We'll see. We can't do it, we can't do it all. <laughs> Uh, ooh, I like this one. Thank you for this, Steve. Uh, the Big Rock Trap in Raiders of the Lost Ark. That is a pretty good rock. Uh, that's that rock that, that rolls that and he's like, like, like running. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Good one. That's cool. All right, we'll keep those coming in. We will pick a winner at the very end. Okay, for those of you who are Wonder and Whimsy Society members, if you did not have a chance to join us for oh. the last Mastermind last week, it was on grief and loss, which... I know, sounds like a barrel Amazing, of fun, right? Uh, but it was really, it was, it was really cool and very yeah. powerful, and it was something it was a very uh, good conversation. So um, that is up in the private group, the replay of that, and Rachel's amazing recap. As always, Holy Rachel cow, did a Rachel. great job recapping you that. You worked so hard on that. She did such a good job. So uh, check that out. Also, tomorrow is the deadline. I think. Tomorrow or Friday, not sure. But um, so I signed up for Masterclass, oh, which yes. is a uh, online video series of different classes taught by famous people. So last week, the kids and I learned how to uh, make ravioli with Gordon Ramsay. And, it was so uh, yummy. Nailed it. Oh, my nailed gosh. it. He's, uh, he's got nothing on us. <laughs> Seriously, ours looked nothing like it. <laughs> It was terrible, but it tasted good. It, tasted it didn't good. look right, ravioli, but no, it tasted but it, amazing. We did it. We did it. We did it. Uh, and so I also have been watching some art things and some writing things. Well, when I signed up for it, I got a free subscription that I could give to someone. So I said, well, why don't I give it to someone in the Wonder and Whimsy Society? Mm -hmm. And so basically there's a little post in the private group. If you hadn't had a chance to throw your hat in the ring, just leave a comment on that post and I'm going to randomly draw a winner this week. So those are the kind of little things that we do here in Wonder and Whimsy Society. We've got the July mystery mailing box as the yeah. details are being assembled on that. That'll be coming out pretty soon. Fun things are showing up at our door for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So, so uh, I bring that up because if you are not a Wonder and Whimsy Society member and you want to learn more about it, I hope you do, and I hope you become an uh, insider. Make sure you're subscribed to our free newsletter because when we open the doors again, which will probably be in August, mm -hmm. that'll be the best place to find out when that happens because it's it's closed the rest of the year, so we don't have to keep talking, about, talking it. about it all the yeah, time. Yeah, so. we just focus on the members. So, yep. yeah, I hope you'll eventually join us again. Right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on that. Uh, but that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and keep being awesome. <laughs>